Hello everyone, this is John. Welcome back to the Fat Hipster channel. And this video is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, because I made this a little bit ago, and... You know, every so often something distracts me from actually getting back to this. But, you may have seen my previous video where I tried a very old root beer flavored Kool-Aid packet and I told you that I was going to make something else with it. That's this video. This bottle right here is a half bottle of root beer wine. Um, I have two full bottles, uh, but this was the, ha the last of it. I made, a, I made about two and a half bottles worth. So I'm going to experiment with this one and I'm going to try it three different ways in the future, I may or may not have a video coming out with how I made this. I did film a lot of footage for it, but I filmed a lot of footage for a couple things that I made and haven't gotten around to editing them or putting those video pieces together because I already don't like editing these videos, which is just one straight shot. So piecing together many different pieces and putting them together just as one thing that I'm not a fan of. But without further ado, we're going to try it three ways. The first way, you should pour into a cup and taste it. So we got this bottle that I had corked. Now I have to uncork it. Let's just pour it into a glass and taste it. You can see the color is not as dark as a typical root beer, um, more of a bronzy color to it. It smells very root beery. Let's taste it. very nice. I brewed this so it would still be um, sweet like a root beer. Uh, when I originally brewed it, I brewed it dry so it came out with no sugar at all. Then I added back, back some sugar to uh, get it to really taste more like root beer. And I believe when it was dry it was about 12% alcohol by volume. Um, and it went maybe down to 11 or 10 when I add some sugar back to it. That's tasty. Let's try method number two. Rip your float. I got a scoop of ice cream in this cup. Pour it over some ice cream. There you go, it's already starting to look a little bit milky. Whenever I make root beer floats, I kind of like want to get the ice cream to melt just a little bit in there. So you get kind of like a milky consistency for your root beer. Um, and then I kind of like to drink that milky root beer. All right, I think I got a good, uh, good mix there. Let's give it a taste. Hmm. The the whiny like alcoholiness that this has it kind of doesn't work with a float I think if you're gonna make a repair float you just use regular repair let me try it I'll get a, a 
bite of the ice cream with it. It's not bad. It just doesn't, I don't think it works as well as just regular root beer wood with ice cream. Anyway, moving on to try number three. We have what was a frosted mug, but it's been sitting here. The bottom's still a bit frosty. And you know, root beer is carbonated, it gets a nice thick foamy head, but if you make wine, it's completely flat. So, how am I going to make this root beer wine creamy and thick again? I'm going to use this and this. This is a nitrogen canister. This is like a, a bottle that you would put, make whipped cream out of. You can get uh, a nitrogen tap machine, um, but that's going to cost you like 250 bucks. This canister here costs about 25 bucks. Uh, you can make, cold, I've already made um, nitro cold brew coffee out of this with this device, and it turned out really nicely. Um, made by Ico. And uh, it works just as good. It's a little bit more messier, but you can contain the mess, and you'll be all right. First thing I'm going to do, there's a, a max fill line about right here. I'm going to put in this until it runs out or gets to that line. Okay. We've emptied the bottle. That's the max fill line, and this is about right here. This is where it's at. This is the fill line. So we're definitely not passing fill line. We're going to cap this off. It's got like rubber gaskets in there. You just got to give it a little bit of a twist just to compress those gaskets and make sure it's nice and tight. There's two nozzles on the top here. The big one is the one that this nitrogen canister is going to go in. But you need to put it in this little guy first. And then that you screw in so you feel like it's going to get to the end. This tip is actually, they give you these little decorative tips. Um, like I said, this is usually for like making whipped creams and stuff, so it has like these decorative tips. But what I find is because you can put take this and just squirt through here, but it's this tip is not really designed to go straight or one direction. It's going to squirt out a bunch of different ways. I find that if you put one of these tips on, it at least will help you in making sure it's all going in the same direction. So now that we have the tips on, I'm going to turn this further until we hear the canister. Bill. You heard that? These nitrogen canisters are basically one time use. Once you pop that in here, it's all going to come in there. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a mixy mix. I'm not going to be too violent with that. Just want to make sure the nitrogen gets all around in a pond's previously frosted glass which is not frosted anymore let's see if I can move this so you can see it better right here because I want to have two hands on this as to manage any potential mess go down right here let's go There you have it. Frosty mug, carbonated root beer, well, nitrogenated root beer. Let's give this one a taste. Mm. 
well, you notice the um, the nitrogen really didn't hold very long. I hope I still see some bubbles in there. But like, I was hoping for a bigger, thicker head on this. Maybe I need to squirt it harder next time. I don't know. But <sighs> still tastes good. Cheers. Root beer wine. I give it two thumbs up. As far as adding the ice cream to it, just okay. I think for me personally, if I was going to have a, a root beer float, I would just continue to use regular carbonated root beer. But it's interesting. And the nitrogenated piece of it, in this case, didn't really work like I was like, hoping that it would. But uh, I don't hate it. A lot of people think that alcohol and dairy don't mix in general. I think that's um, people who are lactose intolerant already would tend to have problems with dairy. Adding alcohol to that probably is not the best idea for them. Um, but for me, who has no problem with dairy, you only have to worry about the alcohol. As long as you don't drink too much alcohol, you should be good. The other thing is, if you drink too much alcohol, sometimes it'll come back up. If there's dairy in that, probably not something you want to come back up. Delicious. Anyway, that's it for root beer wine, three ways. I'm going to clean this bottle out so I can use it again. The cork is destroyed, really. Um, I got one more bruisey packet. I've yet to determine what I'm going to use um, to make my third batch of wine with for that. If you have any ideas, let me know in, this, in the uh, comment section below. And until then, like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.